Almighty Father, we will indeed worship you. You are in our midst. This is the world that you have made. Now your children are gathered before you to hear your word concerning the institution of marriage. God, teach us how to enjoy the marriage institution. Amen. Teach us about the family life. How to overcome the challenges of the family. Teach us about the home. How to make our home heaven upon the earth. Lord, we wash you. Thank you for answering. We have invited you to our marriage and family. We want to see it move in a different way, in a better way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, my brethren. The Lord bless you. Amen. Yesterday, we listened to let Jesus have his place in your marriage and family. You invited Jesus into your lives, into your marriage and family. And I trust you who are not married, who are going with us in this seminar, have told Jesus in advance that he should take care of your marriage. Good to do that. You will tell him to give you a wife. You will tell him to give you a husband. Yeah, you will tell him to give you wisdom, wisdom of the right choice, wisdom of righteousness. Today, I'm talking to you of building your marriage and family. Building your marriage and family with Jesus. Jesus has come into your marriage and family. Now, he has come for a new thing, as he told you. He has come for a better thing, as he promised you. And so, the instruction to you is, Building your marriage and family with Jesus. You will build your marriage together. You will build your family together with Jesus. In every place, in everything, in every situation that concerns the salvation of man, the blessing of man, God has his role. Man has his role. God is always faithful. He will do his own thing. He will play his role without fail. He will do it always. But the problem has been with man. Man has been the failing person. However, if you make up your mind to have a good family. You make up your mind to have a better family. You make up your mind to build your family. Then be sure to play your role and Jesus will play his role. In the book of John chapter 2. John. Chapter 2. Well, yesterday we considered the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. 
Now, we are considering the marriage in Cana of Galilee. John chapter 2, from verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Jesus was invited to the marriage. You have invited Jesus to your marriage. He has come. And as he is in this, he was in this marriage. He was observing things that were going on in this marriage and said nothing. Why? Because I will yet for this be inquired of from the, of the house of Israel to do it for them. I am here. I see your need. I see your love. I see your struggle, but I'm waiting for you to speak to me. So, then the Bible says, verse 3, and when they had a wanted wine, when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. You see the nature of God, he will always want you to ask. He would want others the border about your situation to ask him. That is intercession. Make intercession for him. Is there nobody that will talk to me concerning this family that I should bless it? Is there nobody? That will talk to me concerning this marriage. Uh -huh. that I should revive it. That I should restore it. That I should do this and do that in it. Now, with Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. But then the members of the family, the person who welcomes Jesus into the family must be ready to make requests. Must be ready to pray. So that Jesus would make that family a happy home. That Jesus would do to that marriage what is required of it. This is point number one that you need to understand. Then number two of it is this. And there were set there six water pots of, of stone. In verse 6. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three baskets, fast packings, a piece, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. What happens next? And they fill them up to the brim. Again, in verse 8, and he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. Here in this uh, verse 7 and verse 8, I am going to I am going to represent Jesus. I will say it. What Jesus said, then I, you represent the mean. You will read out also what the mean did. So that you can understand, there is the Jesus role, there is the human role in the marriage. 
to build up marriage, to restore marriage, to bring the heaven on earth to marriage. Yes. Now let's go. In verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. I'm waiting for you. Verse 8. And he said unto them, Throw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. Can you see Jesus' role and your role in walking on the wall? Jesus' role and your role in walking on your husband. Jesus' role and your role in walking on your children and family members. To get a godly home. To get a restored marriage. To get, yay, a blessed family. Can we do the drama again? The second time, in verse 7 and 8, go there. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Thank you. Yeah. What if when Jesus commanded, what? instructed, I didn't hear the water pause with water, and they didn't bother to do it? Could there have been blessing in that marriage? No. What if Jesus instructed after they had filled the water, fetch from it and give the governor, the master of ceremony? What if they looked at us? How could this man? How could this man make access to fetch water? We know it's water into the pot. And they're asking us to fetch and give another person. Which I don't want to do that shameful thing. What if they didn't do it? They didn't walk by faith with Jesus. The miracle would have not been done. The miracle would have not been exposed. The miracle would have not been recognized. Can you now see why some marriages cannot be restructured? The husband is not willing to do what Jesus said. Or the wife is not willing to do what Jesus said. Or else they are not ready to walk with Jesus by faith. So, the marriage means although, but they are born again. They are children of God. Children of God must obey instruction. Children of God must be obedient to the master. Oh, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Obedience. If you be obedient, if you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good fruit of the marriage. You shall eat the good fruit of the family and the home. Now, we have understood that we, you have your role to play in a godly home. And that God also has his role. We understood, number one, that you must always be praying. Although Jesus is around you, he wants you to ask him, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I, will, I want them to ask me. Ask, I will give unto you. Ask the Father anything in my name. He will do it. He will give it unto you. Ask and receive that your joy oh, concerning the family life. Now, let's go. Having learned this, yes, 
God expects that you will play your part while he plays his part. God will expect you to demonstrate acts of obedience and righteousness and to do all that lies in your power to build a godly marriage and family. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Every wise woman builded her house, but the foolish blocked it down with her hand. The wise woman receives instruction from Jesus and performs them, and by that, builds her house. Builds her but The foolish doesn't receive instruction from Jesus. The foolish doesn't carry out instruction from Jesus. And as a result, goes her own way, speaks her, speaks her own ways, takes her own action. The end of it is that she blocked it down with her own hand. She would tear down that marriage with her own hand. Yeah. Again, verse 2, he that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his way despiseth him. The, the woman that fears God will walk righteously will order her life in Christ, in the fear and obedience to God. But the wayward one despises God. And if God is despised, his instruction is equally despised. His word is equally despised. That's true of a man of man. Men are prone to be proud. Because they belittle the woman. They look down on the woman. And so they feel the woman should just be rolling on the ground for them. And will not want to hear what God has to say. They may not want to listen to what God has to say. And such one destroys their marriage, destroys his marriage. You are a man, but you are proud. You are despising the headship of God. Yesterday, I told you the unity of marriage. Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. These are the three that make up marriage and the woman. Christ, the man, and the woman. And I said, children, I just a blessing to the marriage. They don't make up the marriage. Christ is the head. Man, submit to Christ. Yield to Christ. Obey Christ. Then the man is the head of the woman. Woman, submit to your husband. Obey your husband. But while you are submitting to your husband, you are obeying your husband. Know that your husband also has a superior. And the superior is Jesus. While you are submitting to him, you are looking ahead of him to the one next to him, the higher one, Jesus, yourself. Because the three that make up the marriage, he is always there wanting to come to you. I told you in the Garden of Eden, he was visiting the marriage and the family. He was visiting them. And so he is always interested to be there to make, bring about the completeness of that marriage in spiritual sense. Completeness about that marriage in the joyful, in joyfulness. Completeness in that marriage in all inheritances. Completeness in that marriage in the victories of life. He is always there. 
But here we are told, sinful men and women despise them, and they will never enjoy money. They will never have a peaceful family. Sinful men and women, Bluetooth connected. They will never have a peaceful marriage. That's what we're saying. Get therefore, get the third company, which is Jesus. I told you that yesterday. Get the third component, and now he has come. Okay, husband, submit to him. Listen to him. Get instruction from him. Your marriage will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. You will have a blessed home. Why? No, as I said, Jesus is superior to your husband and can give you instruction. He gives you instruction. What to do to please the man. What to do so that you have no fall before a person greater than the man, which is God himself. Listen to him. If you do, you will have a blessed home. Yes. Now, your thoughts will need perfection. Even if he's a believer, he's a good man, he's a good woman, but still needs perfection. He's, he still needs perfection. She still needs perfection. Paul said, I have not yet been made perfect. I'm still following after. But to understand more in Christ, to know more in Christ, I'm still following after. Therefore, your wife has not learned as much as she needs to learn. She still needs to be perfected. And Jesus is the one that will instruct you on how to perfect that woman. Jesus wants to walk with you to perfect your wife. To instruct your wife and make her better. Similarly, your husband too needs to be perfected. If he is is born again, is a child of God, fine. He needs to know more. He needs to learn more. He needs more encouragement. And Jesus wants to use you to do something to perfect your husband. He wants to do it. How much more? When your husband is a sinner, Jesus wants to serve him. And he will want to play his role over your husband. And you do, as a wife, play your role as he instructs you. When he tells you, do it. Whatsoever he tells you, do it. That's what Mary told those people around Jesus. He said, whatsoever he instructs you, whatsoever he tells you, let's go pray with him to bring blessing to this marriage. Let's go pray with him to solve the need I am seeing in this marriage, to provide what I am seeing in this marriage, lacking. So whatever he tells you, what should you do? What should you do? What should you do? do that is your portion. Do it. Woman, do it what the Lord tells you. Man, do it what the Lord tells you. Remove pride from your life. So, that is what we are letting you know. Because God wants to work with you in achieving this progress. In the life of everyone that is a member of the family. Hence, the following attitude is expected of you. Now that Jesus has come, he is expecting you to do what I'm telling you now. Number one, manifest, adopt the Joseph's attitude. Adopt Joseph's attitude. Now, 
Jesus has come to your life. You have invited him to the marriage. Adopt the Joseph's attitude. In the book of Genesis, chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. From verse 15. Yes. To verse 21. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, he said, Joseph will for adventure hate us and will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servant. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I in the place of God. But as for you, ye not evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he, con he comforted them. And speak kindly unto them. Praise the Lord. Imagine that Joseph, as you see him, the righteous person. Imagine that his brethren were the wife and that had offended the husband, had ill treated the husband. And now, had come to the her senses, her senses, and now came to the husband. See, and the husband be a man like Joseph, that marriage will live in peace. Because the Lord expects that you will forgive your wife all she has done. Forgive her. Because she is afraid, she committed adultery. And you were aware. How could that man be anymore? But if you are like Joseph, that will mean nothing. Because the power to forgive is in your life. God gave it to you. God has instructed you to forgive even as you were forgiven. To forgive others as thou also were forgiven by God. So, what is that? Is it not one sin of adultery she's coming upon? Ask for forgiveness. You sin many sins since you were born. Even before you marry, God forgive all. So, God wants you to forgive your wife. And not only forgive, speak in love with her. Comfort her. Don't reject her. Don't reject her body. Then, ah, you're defied. No. Treat her as though that never happened. But remember, God also has shown you mercy. Treat her well. That is what God wants you to do. If you are ready to do this to your husband, to your wife, you will see your marriage 
garden with new fruits. You will see good. You will see joy. You will see peace coming up. Floating your body. Now, Joseph's attitude gave Joseph's brother's attitude. Learn from it too. Joseph's brother's attitude. Learn from it. Because the problem with human being is with confession. What we call restitution. Joseph's brethren hated him when he was a youth because of his righteousness. He sold him to Egypt. Even before then, they threw him into an empty well. He wanted him to die. It's only the grace of God was with him. He sold him away because of envy and jealousy and because of his dream. Although, how many years would have passed now? Definitely, maybe more than 39 years have passed. Far, far more than that. Because the father came and stayed in Egypt for 17 years. After the family. So we will now just short the Western to calculate it. But it was after a great number of years. When they came to Egypt, Joseph was playing well with them. And they appeared to forget to apologize for their yesterday. It was still breaking the righteous man's heart. It was still touching the heart of the righteous man, Joseph. But these people didn't bother. You have offended your wife in some ways. Although many years have passed, although she's laughing with you now, is playing with you, but there is a wound in her heart. That which you did many years, and you are aware. You are aware of it. Adopt the Joseph's brother's attitude. When their father died, reality came on them. That, and they fear, hey, Joseph can kill all of us now. Because maybe all, all the favor he showed us was because the father was around. Now that the Father is gone, trouble has come. Are you not seeing fear in your heart? Because of that thing you did many years against your husband? Against your wife? That fear is a message from God. Tell this woman, sorry. Tell this woman, forgive me. Seek her forgiveness because that fear in you is saying it's a wound. You have wounded somebody. It's a message. So go to him, go to her and apologize. It will heal her. It will comfort her. It will make her original towards you and make her believe that you are a sincere man. In fact, that you will go to heaven. Yeah. So, God wants you to practice this in your home. Very vital. Seek for apology. Keep forgiveness. So that a new law should be formed. Remember, you're not the former thing. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. Cooperate with him. Do your portion. He will do his own portion. In Jesus' name. Again, take the prodigal son approach. It's still the same thing anyway. I'm still talking about the same thing. But it's very vital. Take the prodigal son approach. Prodigal son's approach. 
In Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. The Bible tells us here about how to heal a relationship. How to restore a damaged relationship. How to recover your right in your husband. How to recover your right in your wife after having lost it for long. Now that you have got Jesus. Now that you have come to your senses. Take the prodigal son's approach. In verse 11 of Luke 15, the Bible says, and he said, the certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted the substance with riotous living. Here we can see a practical case of divorce. This relationship has received divorce. They have split, they have separated. And the court has shared for them their property. And the woman has gone. And the man has gone. So, the man has left. But the problem here, let's say, was with the woman. Who left? Who had gone? Even with property. Even by the court. But, the Lord shot at the reality of love. After she left her husband. Look at it. What happened? Verse 14. And when she had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in one. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the herbs that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have prayed enough to, to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. Now, look at this case. I said divorce had taken place between this man, in this relationship. Let's take it the relationship of a husband and wife. A wife has divorced the man. And I've got to do some adultery business to do some prostitution business and wait and discover in her moving up and down, vagabond living, that she had fooled herself. Her greatness had disappeared. Yes, her pride had collapsed. Her all was gone. Now she thought to use wisdom. I have lost my respect and self-image. Let me go and look for a man, any man to marry and be in the house of a man. Who will marry such a person? Your value has been diminished. So he got one of the laborers to marry her. <laughs> and then, to manage life, he notice again, that the laborer will never come home, neither give food at home. Hey! 
there's a person that will die here. Then she remembered that uh -uh, I knew my first husband. I had food to eat there. I knew that I was always having food in the store. People could come and beg me for food. I will give them food from the store. But see me dying here. I will go back to that man. Hallelujah. I will go back to that man. And what did he say here? I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Can you see it was heaven that touched that woman? It was heaven that brought that woman to her senses. Yes, sir. She had repented. You have repented as a woman. God has touched your love. The Holy Spirit has touched your love and recovered you. The spirit of madness has left you. Now you are in your senses. Then a mind is saying, go back to your husband. Go back to your husband. Please do that. Man is still waiting for you. God wants you to do that. Don't be afraid. God gave us this story to tell us that there is forgiveness for every sin a person commits and is willing to have his life, have his sin forgiven. Then that person shall find it. Arise. Go and look for forgiveness. You wasted your life outside your husband. But go back now. Let's see what heaven will do for your life. Let's see how God will help you as to go to meet your husband. Now, see the language, the way he picked this prodigal son. Yes. I was 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against him and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Meet me as one of your hired servants. Can you see that? What is humility? Woman, put on humility. When you are going to meet your husband to apologize, you have committed adultery, you have done wickedness, and now you have to go and do restitution to your husband. Otherwise, your heart is not peaceful. Put on humility. Go to that man with words. It's heaven that touched you. It's heaven that changed you. It's heaven that delivered you. Heaven also has preserved that man. So, go to that man. Carry good words. In the spirit of humility, go back to your husband. So, the prodigal son came home. The mystery of God. God has been doing this for people. It's because you do not know the mercy of God. The magnitude of his mercy. That's why you are afraid. God has tempered with your husband. God has put your heart, your love upon your husband. Listen, it was not because of the law of patience and the birth that altered it now. More than just that. It was because of the people that gathered around King Ahasuer. More than just that. It was because the marriage of Ahasuer with Esther took place too fast. Otherwise, he would have forgiven Vashti. Yes. Because he started thinking about Vashti again. He started wishing for Vashti again. Why did I take this decision in a rush? Although she was stubborn to me, although she embarrassed me in the public, but I would have been patient. Is this law of patience and the belt? I would have forgiven. So can you see the heart that is waiting for you, whatever you're seeing? 
God will talk your husband for you. Amen. Go to him in humility. Amen. God will make that man forgive you. See it now. Bible tells us in verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yea, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him even before he uttered a word. Can you see this abundant love with everlasting love have I loved thee? And with loving kindness have I done thee? I got you to love you. I will forgive you. God will put your love in your husband's heart. Don't be afraid to go and, and apologize. And yeah, thank God this man really made business. The prodigal son. The love the husband gave, and the father gave to this man, the prodigal son, did not make him not to produce pride. No, he maintained his humility. Because if he didn't say anything, well, I didn't know that he would carry me like this. So I will come back. You didn't confess. That man that welcomes you is still wanting, he is still thinking, who are you now? The question is still in his mind. Why is it that you did a thing, your husband kept quiet, and you also kept quiet? You did evil. Your husband didn't talk. He's just playing with you. And you knew you did evil. You now kept quiet. Instead of coming to say, I have done evil against you. My darling, my husband, but you kept quiet. Listen, that spoils your marriage. Because it doesn't give freedom. The man is afraid of you. You may leave again tomorrow. If the prodigal son didn't confess, the father will have no security over him. The father's heart will not be restful on him. He would have been thinking this boy can live in the time. But the boy is up. In verse 21. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy son. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. And you see, he still confessed. Please go and still confess. Although your husband appears not to say anything, still go and confess. This is how to clean your mind. Come. If your husband says nothing, does God also say nothing? You are seeking for forgiveness. Is it just because of your husband? Have you not sinned against God too? He said, look at the boy, the young man. He said, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. And heaven demands apology to the person you have sinned. Heaven demands restitution to the person you have sinned. And if you want the presence of Jesus, who has Saved you, touched you. Go and do what is right. Go and confess your sin. Although your husband appears not to know, is it not bothering you? Heaven has not settled with it. Your husband has forgotten you, said, but heaven has not forgotten. It's in the book of record. It is at the time you go to your husband and open up your mouth and say out this evil that heaven will clean record against you. And if record is against you, Jesus said, if your sin be upon you, and you find a way with it, how can you live? If sin is still unconfessed in your life, unapologized, how will the Lord bless your marriage? How are you thinking that God will do newness in your marriage? Go and confess and make the joy complete. After confession, see what happened now. Verse 22. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring of acceptance. The ring means I have accepted it on his heart and shoes on his feet and bring Peter, the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. Say it would be in verse 24. 
one, two, go. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be buried. If the boy never confessed, this other thing would have not followed. The joy would have not come. The change of raiment would have not come. The parted car would have not been killed. Announcing to everybody should have not been done. The rejoicing would have not been done. You know, you cheat yourself. Because somebody said nothing, you kept quiet. You didn't go to the extent of clearing yourself. You prevent many good things. You prevent many good things. You cheat yourself. You are preventing many good things. So, please, go and confess that thing. Confess it. Woman, go and tell your husband, do you remember this time? Do you remember that time that when you were marrying me, I told you I was a virgin? And I saw how proud you were to marry a virgin. But after the marriage, you discovered that I was not a virgin. I saw your face. It was the face of a disappointed man. I said nothing. I want to tell you, I, was, I did evil against you. It was a lie. And I'm sorry I told you a lie. You will recover that man. It will be that day he married a good wife. Otherwise, the one he has been keeping has been managing a bad guy for all this long time. I'm telling you. So, now, the this prodigal son approach. What about the father of the prodigal son attitude? What about that? Towards your wife. Or towards your husband. The father of the prodigal son. Yes, the boy, the boy never gave him rest until he, he gets him his resources. Would he have wanted his resources to be wasted, to be destroyed? How much gain could he have made over them in business? For all the years the son went away with that property, with that amount of money, he really made a great loss. What gain is in him now? Wretched for coming with rocks upon his body, giving me shame, making me ashamed to the society. See him now. People will be asking me, is it HIV is it gold? Is it what? Is it what tuberculosis? My house, this boy. Look at it. But the love of his son was always there. Despite the stubbornness of the son, despite the waywardness of the son, despite that the son went away, the love was still there. And the love was greater than our state, the sin of the son. Love that is greater than our sin, the love of God. So eventually, bring the son, get back. He never waited for a word. He must express his love by bringing the son to his bosom, to his heart. He said, my love remains for you. All this thing you're confessing is additional. As for me, that's seeing you like this. I'm satisfied. Can you see? Can you do that for your wife? All evil. But uh, he has spoken terrible things against you and your family. Terrible things. She has done many terrible things against your life, against your family. But now he's coming for apology because Jesus found him on the way. Will you despise Jesus at the standing by your wife because her offenses were too many? Will you? Not forgive your wife who is weeping before you, seeking for your forgiveness. Won't you show a heart of compassion? 
forgive her. That's what God expects of you. Mary was crying and shedding tears on Jesus' feet and wiping them with her hair and anointing Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, your sins which are many are forgiven you. Be like Jesus. Forgive her. Her sins are many actually. Forgive her. That's what God expects of you. Say it out in your mouth. Then so she should be free. Say it out. Don't keep quiet. And did I do her anything? No, say it out. She needs to hear it into her heart. She needs to write down what you say because she's going to share it with other people. This is what my husband said. She's going to use it to encourage other women. That's what she needs you to say out your forgiveness. Please say it out. Why are you not saying out? Oh, you despise her. If Jesus never said to Mary practically, openly, in ways that could be counted and written down, your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has made thee whole. How could Mary have known? How could the people around have known, have heard? Say your forgiveness is out. Say it, communicate it. There are weights that are precious. There are weights that are in season. So that's what the Lord is teaching you now. Jesus has come to the family and is taking you to the foundation of marriage to cleanse you. He's taking you to the depth to go to the foundation and to the cornerstone and get it thoroughly purged so that nothing should be disturbing your heart forever throughout that marriage. So that nothing should be disturbing the partner, your marriage partner. That's what God wants you to do. There's still another approach. The Philemon's approach. Philemon's approach. God wants you to take the Philemon's approach. In the book of Philemon, it was the case of Onesimus. Next to him, it was the case of the Muslim that stole from him his father and ran away and was found by Paul, the apostle. Yeah. Paul discovered Onesimus, and Onesimus has become converted now. And so, and was it been useful to Paul? Paul would have taken on his supposed to use him, but he must fulfill divine principle. Good. Some people would want to be used in church, but they're not fulfilling divine principle. Some people go into ministry without fulfilling divine principle. Look at the case of Onesimus now. He said, verse 10, Philemon verse 10. I beseech thee for my son on Israel, whom I have begotten in my bond, which in thy past was to thee unprofitable, but thou profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him. That is my own boy, whom I would have returned with me that in thy state he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a while, for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord, if 
thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he had wronged thee or ought thee or put that on my on, or on my account, I Paul have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. I'll be it. I do not say to thee, how thou always unto me, even thine own self desire. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah brother. Let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my power in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Praise the Lord. Can you see? Onesimus was a farmer, a slave to find him. Now, slaves were bought with money. Not there to serve their master. Onismos was the head, a slave, a servant to Philemon. And Philemon was a believer with good report. When Paul was in prison, some ways brought Onismos across Paul. Paul preached to her. You would never want to pick me anymore. The man has moved to and it's changed. It's born again. Now, it seems it's a pastor. Now. Pastor over his heart is going to be with you. The pastor. Or with the one. Yay. So, pastor was a terrible man. Now, the wife was a terrible man, but now if she has received Jesus Christ by my ministry, it's a changed person. I have observed him consistently. He's doing well. In fact, he is in service of God. He has served here. We are watching, but we fail to see him. We have failed. She will speak to us. That's why we are recommending him. We are recommending her. The church is playing role. Now, the pillar of this. Pillar of this. Sorry, pillar of them. That's what I'm saying. Pillar of them. Because Paul said, I'm sending him back to you. Receive him. He is my, my heart. He is my heart. Receive him. I would have kept him with me that he should serve me. You are my convert, my Bible. To get the word from God, for the word of God from me, Bible. And I need familiar service. Because his life is part of the separate. That's why I'm sending him on him. Yes. If you want him to serve me, you will say it. I will say you are my father. You are the one to punish. I will not take your support. By level, don't be angry with it. We can go to most people in the past so that you should come and get born again. Otherwise, all this while you are, what you born again? See, this something this is. It might be that problem can be you so that the better life is coming. So that the fear of God should come in. So that 
a change should come in so that you could get help in a better way. So you have been persuaded of your work by the church, by God Dima, God Dima, pleading with you, take your wife. The wife has changed. The wife has taken some. Your wife has met with Jesus. Or else the husband is this one. And he went up to the city, in fact, I don't know what he did before the now. It's not the people talking about. As for the little hospital can test it. Hospital can check out. But we're talking about relationships. There are way to benefit you. You will benefit your life. That's why we're talking about receiver. Receiver. Why I'm saying this? Don't be church. It's bleeding. Don't be tough. Don't reject it. Don't be wicked. Have a heart that I will submit to the pleading of people on the behalf of the one. Have a heart that will submit to the pleading of people, the church, on the, be on, on the behalf of your husband. God wants it so. Because there's something God wants to accomplish in the marriage of the two of you. The marriage of Abraham and Sarah accomplish something for God. The marriage of Isaac and Rebecca accomplish something for God. The marriage of Elizabeth and Zachariah accomplish something for God. There is yet something God will want to accomplish for your marriage. Where are you refusing? Where are you refusing reconciliation? Don't refuse it. Upon pleading, upon pleading, it might be for your good. The Lord is sending your wife back. Or for your good. The Lord is sending your husband back. Hey, but I have married another. Have you know her? Huh? That he that has had the wife. Wife of his youth. A man is another is committing adultery. He wants to die in adultery. Do you want to die in adultery? Have you not heard that he that lives, she that leaves her husband, marries another, commits adultery? Do you want to die in adultery? Your husband is pleading with you. And people are pleading on the behalf of your husband. Come back home. Leave that wrong marriage and return to the right one. Is it not grace that wants to save you? Humble yourself. So, that is it. But notice something here. Paul said, I would have taken Onesimus to serve me. Onesimus was doing it. But I said, no. Real righteousness demands that Onesimus should go and apologize. Real righteous, true righteousness demand. Where are you serving with false? You are serving with marital false. You are serving God with family false. And you say you don't bother. You are not doing clean service for God. Because you have not settled with the marriage false. You have not cleared the matter well with the world. You have not cleared the matter well with your husband. That's not what the Bible says. If you bring your gift before the altar and dare remember that your brother has an oath against thee, leave there thy gift and go first. Reconcile with your brother. It's not the Bible says so. Why are we so interested in service? In service, I want to serve the Lord. I have a ministry and you are living alone. I have a ministry, and your wife is alive. You are living alone. Your husband is alive. You are living alone. No, there's altogether a fault in your life. Have you made effort, much effort, to the justification of your sir before the brethren, before the church, and it didn't work? Can anyone testify with you and say, Truly he tried, but the wife refused. Truly she tried, but the husband refused. 
Have you made effort in that? What is the law that allows you to treat one as a publican and uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a publican? What is the law? If your brother offends you, go to him. If he cannot hear you, take with you one or two. If he cannot hear you, bring the matter to the church. If he cannot hear you, let him bring baby to you as a publican and as a sinner. It takes processes. Do you have the processes before the Lord? Or you're just interested in service? No, there's altogether a fault over your life. You have not taken the fabrics of righteousness to the end of it. You have not done what God wants you to do. Then this service, will it take you to heaven? I want it not. Because what practical effort have you made? What practical effort? So that is what the Lord wants. He wants us to say to maritally, say to the family's code, husband and wife, say to well, righteousness demands it, heaven demands it, the people in the society demand it too. They want to be witness between you and your wife. So, now, see, Paul said, he said, if thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as my soul. If he has wronged thee or owed thee all, put that on my account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Now, Paul was writing this in prison. It was considered that Paul's hands were unchained. So he was dictating his letter to others to write for him. But to show Philemon, I'm too much concerned for you to forgive on this. He struggled with his hands being tied together to hold the pain and struggle to inscribe this. That's what the, I, Paul, have written this with my own hand. My brother, settling your case is a hard thing. Do it. Settling with your wife, with your husband, is the quiet. He said, if he stole your money, I will pay you back. Meaning restitution is very vital. You stole your husband's money. Go and confess it. Paul was writing this. He didn't give Philo, he didn't give Onesimus money to go with it. But put it on my own account. But let righteousness be done. You don't have the money, go and confess. Definitely we saw Onesimus Philemon never asked Paul to pay back anything. But Paul was ready. Go and settle peace. It's more than the money you don't have. As for the money, let them put it in your own child. How God will help you pay? Let us see how your tomorrow will be. As you take the matter to God in prayer. But get this thing settled. You have stolen your wife's money. You have sold a property that you have no right to do. Now, it is the reason for the oppression. Restore the money. Go and tell him I will restore. Yes, I will restore. Although you don't have the money, let him put it to your own account. Let's get peace. Heal the mind of that person. So, you see the Philemon's approach. He yielded to the intercession of the man of God. He yielded to the intercession of the church of God. Do so like what? So that there should be peace. Yeah. Now, you now are to live in the newness of life. Remember you're working with God. 
Jesus has come into your family. And he came for a reason. You have asked him, Lord, restore my marriage. My husband doesn't cooperate with me. He hates me. He doesn't touch me and say, why? Jesus said, is that so? You know, remember when he came to Lazarus' place, he said, where have you laid him? Is that is to say, what is your problem here? When he came into the family, where have you laid Lazarus? Now that he has come to your marriage and family, he's asking, what is the problem? My husband doesn't touch me. Oh, is that so? You have explained it to the doctor. He's going to give you a prescription. Yes. If the doctor gives you a prescription, will you swallow them? Or you collect it and keep? Collect and keep. Collect and keep. You're not swallowing them. That's the same thing. Jesus will be telling you what to do. You don't practice it. Yet two words of the world. And not hearers only, deceiving your own self. In the book of Colossians, chapter 3, Colossians, chapter 3, I read from the spot. Now remember you're walking with Jesus. You are working with Jesus to bring something good, new needs to your family, to win victory over the devil's war in your husband's life, in your wife's life, even in the children, and all that concerns the family. Now, in cooperation with Jesus, the Lord is saying, as far, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience. You know those, the way you were living your life in the time past that brought problem on your mind that make you to be rejected. The way you live your life in the time past. Yes. That frustrated that marriage. Don't live that way anymore. Otherwise, you will still frustrate Jesus. He will not achieve anything in that house. And if he cannot achieve anything there, he will leave. Leave that, that, that former way of life. Don't leave it anymore. It's the reason why your spouse didn't believe you. Didn't accept you. Yes, it's the reason. And it continues. Yeah. But now, verse 8, ye also put of all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fill the communication out of your mouth. <laughs> put anger away from you. Your anger makes your wife an angry woman. In fact, you trained her. You trained your wife how to be angry. And when she became angry, she didn't respect you anymore. Because an angry man is a proud man. An angry man despises whoever is before him. Now that you want Jesus to come and walk in your marriage, to come and walk in your family, put away anger from you. Put away bitterness from you. Clamor. Shouting. You talk with a shout. You talk with close eyes. You talk. No laughter. 
No smile. There was no freedom in the house. You were like a cat. Everybody there was run, so they ran away. You are alone now. There's no food for you to eat again. That is it. You have frightened out everybody. You have repented. Remember, I will do it no more. Take, this, take away that anger. Pray to Jesus to take away the anger. Anger makes a place of confidence, a place of fear. So, remove anger. Why are you speaking angrily? Why are you treating him angrily? In those days, if he touched you on the bed, you would shout. You would be angry. All his body would die. And so eventually, since he has learned that touching you was disturbing himself, your husband practiced abstinence for one year, two years, and has become adjusted. So you, he doesn't see you as a woman in the house. Your body has no word for him. Your anger drove him away. He doesn't bother about you and say, my husband is not touching me. You trench him. Your anger frightened him away. Now, put away anger. Put away anger. Man, I'm talking to you too. Your wife doesn't know how to approach you. You are angry all the way. You are frustrating that woman until she too is answering back. Is answering back. You command, she commands. You throw at her, she throws at you. That's marriage. Marriage is gone. But now, That you have believed in Jesus. That you have accepted Jesus and invited him. Put away this anger. Clamor. Shout and rob. Again. Verse 9. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man. Which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him, don't tell lies to your wife. Your work disappeared when your wife noticed that you were a liar. You were leaving the house. You want your wife said, ah, but there's no food, food, money for food today. What do we eat? What about the children? How do we do? He said, go to my other cloth, that red cloth there, put hand in this other side. Then they might not enough money to do what you're talking about. Bye. And she was so happy. She said, oh, bye. Go where until you come. Uh, and what do I prepare for you? And she went to the red cloth and put her in all the pockets. Nothing was there. Bye. When you were coming back, is it a human being coming back or an animal? Is it the person that married? No. Your value disappeared from that man, from that woman. Your value lost. You lost your value that day. You lost your value. No. Now, that's why she was not. She was not respecting you anymore. You were a liar. She beat the children every time. She would be telling the children. If you copy the character of your father, if you copy <laughs> every time, for oh, that your life. So, thank God you're humble to Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is our hope. You're humble for him. Now he has come to do something. He wants to restore your confidence in your wife. 
He wants to restore the confidence of your wife on you. And that means he has to heal that love that has taken a seat in your wife's heart. Don't lie another one. Lie no longer. You're a new man. You're in Christ now. Don't do that again. Put off all this old man character. Now that you invited Jesus in, that's what the Lord is telling you. Verse 11. Verse 10. And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, satire, born, nor free. But Christ is all in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindly, humbleness of man, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Many man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now change. Don't be a tough person anymore. Be humble. Be gentle. Don't speak roughly anymore. Don't speak roughly anymore. But that is not the life of Christ. For I am me and lowly in heart. Be meek now. Be gentle now. Be meek. Be gentle. That's what God wants from you. Do it now before your husband, before your wife. Show that you have changed. Show that you have changed. How was Paul and Saul persecuting the church? How was his appearance? If he appeared people around, how was his appearance when he got converted? When Barnabas brought him to the prison? There was a difference. There, let there be a difference you have made with Jesus. And above all, above all this, put on charity. Put in the bond of perfect law. Sincere law. Sincere law. Sincere law. Don't follow culture. You're following culture. Treating your wife. You can't speak kindly. Bring the water. Is she offending you? Why do you speak with absolute voice as if you spoke before and the water delayed? This word is with anger. Don't do that anymore. Let there be love. Our brother testified, oh, I did something wrong. I thought that the pastor would scatter me. But no. Yes, no. It could be a mistake. He didn't do it willingly. Can I not make the same mistake? With anger. If you have a problem with anger, seek God to remove it. Because you're counting that it is because of the fault of your wife, the fault of your husband, that's why you're angry. No! It's because you're an angry person. If anger is not there. This little, little thing that you're manifesting, anger, you won't manifest it. You will not manifest it. Anger is not there. If you manifest them, Little, little thing like that, go and ask God. He should do operation over you. That you have anger. Appendix. You hear? And it's disturbing you. God should do operation and remove it. The Lord sanctify you holy. Yeah. So, be gentle, be not. Lord, let 
your face change. Let the people around you see love. Let your wife see love. It will not be a slave in the house. And why? It's you that your husband will never get your face clean. Every time you look tall, even how to make a demand on you, he doesn't have courage. So I, my, I need to, ah, your face. By just looking at your face like this, he will go to the other room. Because the, your face is not welcome. Why is it so? Now that you have Christ, now that you are born again, change that attitude. Don't learn from your mother what your mother was doing. She was not born again. Your mother was not born again. Don't carry her attitude to your life. So, that is what God wants you to know. Know this well. Live in love. Speak no more corrupt things. Let no corrupt speech come out of your mouth. Because these ways you speak, terrible ways, abusive ways, or you are making jesting, and your jesting is the bad guy. Jesting that is not convenient. Don't do that. Let your ways minister love, minister peace to your wife, to your husband. Even if that person did wrong, yes. Yeah. Deny not your spouse conjugal right. This is why another problem is you. What caused the problem actually is this conjugal right, the sexual right your husband has towards you, your wife has towards you, and God was the one that says, "Give her, give it to him." Why are you denying her? Is this denying that brought bitterness to the heart? A man told me, who oh married, that the way the wife treated him, one time he, 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 he woke up from sleep in the night and sat on the bed and was seeing the wife sleep and said, This woman. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He was looking, look at us. This woman. What will he do? How will he get his way through this woman? God doesn't wonder. Free yourself. And man, you would think your wife doesn't need you so much. Does she eat the food you eat in the house? She needs you as you need her. Give her a stage. Plan well together on family planning or whatever you want to do so that you satisfy yourself. Otherwise, Satan uses this area in the heart. He creates pain in the heart. When your husband has not touched you for quite some time, have you asked him why? Or you behave as if, hey, if you will not touch me, let him go. Me, I don't bother. You are bringing trouble to the house. You are bringing trouble to the house. The Bible says, let there be consent, agreement, together in any matter in this area. Let it be clear. Not that everybody lives his own. Everybody makes his own assumption. And if you don't want it, don't, I don't bother. Make sure I don't bother. You will live in that condition for 10 years. The devil will buy you off. And all of you, both of you will be waiting for hellfire. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, settle in this matter of the marriage bed. Peacefully discuss it. On children, on health, on tiredness. But when that circumstance is here, the sickness is over. Come again quickly. The Bible uses the word, the word quickly. Let Satan will tempt you for your incontinency. So married means still masturbate. That's a bad thing. Where are their wives that they are masturbating? 
or the wives masturbating. Where are your husband? But they, we are talking about righteousness. Correct this thing. Don't go about preaching the gospel without getting this thing clean. God is a clean God. The gospel is a clean gospel. Therefore, be ye clean, be ye holy in all manner of your conversations. All manner of your love. Yeah, be willing to suffer the blame so that there can be peace. Why are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Nobody wants to go to the cross. Go to the cross and let the matter in. But you who go to the cross will become the After the cross, what? The crown. You will have promotion in that man. Bear the matter. Let the matter die. See, this person refuses to take the blood. No, you are not. Oh, oh, is that so? Okay, no, it's okay. Thank you. Before Satan arrived, the matter has finished. You are the one that stopped Satan by bearing the matter to solve. And there will be peace in your house. Let patience have a perfect work in you. Be patient. Be patient again. Be patient the third time. Learn patience. For in patience, you will keep your righteousness. In patience, your name will remain in the book of life. In patience, you will remain with Jesus. Therefore, be patient. Yeah, commit all things to God in prayer. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, I will thanks given. Let your request be made known to God. Solve your family matter with prayer. Solve your wife's case with prayer. Solve your husband's case with prayer. Because sometimes you think it is the wife doing it. It is the husband doing it. No! There is a manipulative power of witchcraft from outside that have arrested her. She cannot think anymore. He cannot think of his own. Some power, some women somewhere have arrested your husband's mind. That's why he's behaving like that. It is by prayer you break that yoke. And the man will be happy because you have set him free. He himself been struggling. He didn't know how he would be free. He been struggling. Your wife cannot explain why she's like this towards you particularly. There is a manipulating her. Maybe a person within the house is doing this. Or if someone somewhere is doing this, prayer breaks the yard. Bam! Destroy! Pray violent prayer. And some of you, the way you pray, I know you can't cast out the book. Too weak. Even when we pray to, we, we are angry at Satan, we are dealing with Satan. The way you are doing, you are doing your own, Satan will come to you. Because the other people are telling me, but you are not, I will stay here. I will stay where you are. Be powerful in your prayer. Deal with the devil. Break that yoke. Find the spirit that is causing your wife to behave like that. Pull it down. Break the power that is causing your husband. To hate you. What is the reason? No. Some forces are working here. He that shall say to this mountain, get removed. And shall not doubt it in his heart. Shall get it done. God will do it. So, solve the problem with prayer. Constant prayer will change character. Will change attitude of your partner. If it's possible, get another man agree with you. Another prayer partner. Mature, sincere. Two are better than one. Whatsoever two of you shall ask me 
I shall do it for you. It shall be done by my Father which is in heaven. So, use prayer. Seek counsel from true believers. Don't say, no, 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 no. Uh, matters of our family should, if I cannot handle it, let me die in it. You will die and go to hell. It's the same thing like some of these churches that they don't take drugs. If you're sick, if you pray, pray, it doesn't work. You mean, don't go to hospital. If you die, you will die. Are you holy? They're telling you you should die now. Are you okay? What about the ignorance that is in you? Seek help. Seek counsel. Seek counsel. And deliver yourself from a situation you cannot change. You cannot understand. Man of God is there for you. Being of God, mature Christian, are there for you on that matter. Introduce family devotion. Let the people learn to read the world. Work on your contrary thoughts. Let me stop here. Work on your contrary thoughts. Everybody say it. Say it again. Work on your contrary thoughts. There has been a thought that has been disturbing you. That thought is saying that your wife is a witch. Refuse it. Because there's no proof. Have you got to prove? It is the devil. That wants to scatter your mind. There is a thought that is saying this man is keeping another woman somewhere. No proof. No proof. Just the devil that has put that thought there. Reject it. The thought of foolishness is sin. What did I say? The thought of foolishness is sin. Exactly. Because what proof do you have for that thought? That charge you're giving on that man that is stealing your love from him. That is preventing your love from him. Are you not seeing it satanic? Or else, there is maybe an infirmity in your, in your wife. What infirmity? Okay, she's limping. She's limping. Then it thought is saying, Actually, you made a mistake in life. How could you have married a limping woman? How will you now move with your friends with their wives and your wife will be like this and be following? Them? I'm telling you, you say say that. Beauty is of character, not of the face. That she service you. Look to that which God looks to in your wife. Look to that which God looks to in your husband. Yes, I know she's he's blind in one eye, but there are virtues in that man. Listen, Jacob was a limping man because God Himself was limping on him by removing his. The, I had the whole law beside his bones came out. Is that not so? But that, let's go to heaven and you'll see where he is. <laughs> Remove the stones from your law. But because they come from Satan, we break them. Casting down imagination. And every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Bring it down to the, captiv to the captivity and to the obedience of Christ. The power of the Lord come upon your life. Amen. May the power of the Lord bring peace to your marriage. Amen. Bring joy to your marriage. Amen. May the Lord give you the victory. Amen. Our individual and collective victory. May the Lord give you victory. Amen. 
Rise up upon your feet and begin to thank the Lord. Worship the Lord. Go and do this. Let the Lord start with you. Oh Lord, but start with you. Jesus begin with me. I will go for you, Lord. I will go for you, Lord. I am, Lord, come and 
Praise them do their part. Cast them out to lake of fire in the mighty name of Jesus and those of mm. glory for families. Jesus, take control. Jesus, come on. Let them do their part. Lay your yokes, all demonic powers.
you. I will obey you, Lord. I will obey you. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. Sing it again, oh Lord, let's start with me. Mm. Oh Lord, let's start. Mm. Jesus, begin with me. Jesus. I will obey you, Lord. I will obey you, Lord. I will obey you, Lord. I will obey you here I am Lord here I am Lord help me help me help me Lord help me Lord help me help me tell God so let him start with you. Let him start with you. Let God help you. Go and start with your wives. Go and be the one to start. Go and start with your husband. Go and be the one to start. Go and be the one to start. Don't wait for him. Stop. Don't wait for her. Stop. Jesus' name we pray. Let's raise up our hands for prayer. Almighty Father, I am praying for your sons and daughters. Many are having it tough in the family, tough in their marriage. Lord, you are giving them the word of wisdom. The Lord by wisdom created the world. I am praying this wisdom will work in their marriages. Amen. It will work in their family. Amen. Empower them by the Holy Ghost to work out this in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, there are people who need to be born again. Otherwise, without me, ye can do nothing. I am asking, you will convict them of their sins. Amen. They will seek your forgiveness. They will lie, their lives, you will change to conform to this image, Amen. to be empowered for this work, to the glory of your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.